How's it going everyone? About a month ago I made this, a bit of a buffed up 1 7th second scale tank out of cardboard, some plastic pieces and beads. It was my first attempt at scratch building a military vehicle, so I decided to build one more in a bigger scale. Let's get to the build then, shall we? To start, I'm cutting off cardboard to build a chassis for the vehicle. These two actual self-propelled howitzers are my reference points. The end result will resemble a mixture of both. Once I cut and glued the side panels, I cut and glued a sheet on top of it for the rest of the structure to sit on. While at it, I made two of these. One I will use in a later build. Also can be my spare one if things go south. I'm using various jeweler bits to build road wheels for this. These are mainly wooden pieces so they glue together nicely and cleanly. I'm stressing clean because super glue is really messed to work with. It's toxic to breathe obviously and ruins the skin on my fingertips quite badly. Using these tiny bits to represent rivets and bolts throughout the build. They look really nice when painted but due to their tiny size and my shaky hands, very hard to position on the surface. Once the wheels are ready, I glue them on the base of the vehicle. Overall, making a track vehicle from scratch is not really hard, especially if it's not an exact replica, so you can change things here and there. And mistakes can be labeled as unique creative approach. Hardest part is the tracks. Cutting off so many small bits from whatever material you're using, in my case it's the same cardboard, and aligning them on a straight, already wobbly, thin, linear material, and then making sure everything is smoothly and straightly glued on the wheels. In my case, none of what I just said before applies. There were uneven glued pieces here and there, but since it's not a replica, this being my second attempt and knowing when everything comes together and painted, it will represent what it's supposed to be nicely. Once I'm finally done with the tracks, I'm gluing the side skirts and adding additional panels from cardboard to both give extra details and act as an extra armor on the finished model. I felt like I could add extra paneling and did so with thinner cardboard with rounded edges. And more rivets to complete my work on the bottom side of the vehicle. Cutting off a piece from the cardboard sheet to start on the superstructure. I cut off a circle on the top side to start working on a rotating turret. Before I glue this piece, I make sure to sand the edges off of glue gunk for a better fit. After a while measuring and calculating, I drew a rough template for the turret. With so much cardboard cutting, I dulled 5 exacto blades throughout this build. Turret is somewhat ready, but I have a weight distribution problem. For the rotating, I'll utilize magnets. I'm simply gluing one magnet on the chassis and one in the turret. This was the simplest solution for me to make a rotating turret, and it works fairly well. In order to counter the weight distribution problem I mentioned earlier, I'm gluing bolts and nuts in the turret's front. I gotta mention that these are the main reason I hate working with hot glue gun aside from occasionally burning my fingers. Once the mechanical side of it's done, I'm working on covering the front of the turret with leftover cardboard pieces. For the gun, I'm using an ink pen cap, a wooden circular bit and soap bottle pump piece. These jeweler bits have interesting shapes, so I'm adding them onto the barrel. As for the second moving aspect of this build, I want the gun to elevate. For that, I cut off two half circles and drilling them to make a wooden pin going through the gun barrel. 
Now that I'm done with how it actually moves and where it's positioned, rest is easy to put it on the turret front. In order to cover the gap, I'm using the leftover track pieces I cut off earlier, positioning them to make it look like armor plating. To buff up the sides of the gun, I cut off two different sizes of bottle caps and glued them. With more leftover cardboard, I cut off strips to make a random pattern of texture and covered various gaps on the top side of the chassis. By twisting some wire, I made steps for the crew to climb on top of the turret. Looking at it now, I think I should have made them in smaller numbers and kept their distance farther from each other. On the second day of the build, I found this piece of plastic on the sidewalk. I'll use it as driver's hatch. I cut off the extension of it and once I made sure turret rotates freely, I glued it in place. Added an extra piece of cardboard to cover up the gap on the front. And made towing extensions to the bottom front side of the vehicle from steering sticks. I used rhinestones to represent headlights and built a cover around them from thinner cardboard. With wooden bits and rhinestones I made a pair of stoplights and a wooden fence-like panel to cover the engine end of the vehicle from steering sticks. Use some jewelry bits, I filled up this section. I bent more wire to make a cover for the headlights. In order to add more detail, I made two light-like objects which I imagined to be rangefinders or night vision apparatus from, again, jewelry bits. Cut off more cardboard to glue on the turret to represent armor plating, just like how I did for the chassis of the vehicle. And adding up more details with long thin cardboard strips. As a reminder, if you made it up to here without getting bored or losing interest, please subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet. I made a spare wheel to be hung on the rear side of the turret. With a circular cardboard piece and coke bottle plastic thingy, I don't know their name, I made a turret hatch. Glued the rangefinder equipment and added extra random details on the top side. In order to make a towing cable, I twisted some wire, bent it and glued it on the top. And more and more rivets on the armor plating. This really is a tedious work, but do add fantastic details during the painting process. So for the paint job, I primed the whole thing in black as usual. Then applied two coats of Revell's olive green color before I started on painting details. To start this process I dry brushed it all with lighter tones of olive green and light grey. Since I mainly worked with cardboard, there are many lines and small cracky details for the dry brushed paint to bring up details. After that, with Vallejo anthracite grey I painted the wheel rivets and gun barrel details. Painted the lights and rangefinder unit with Vallejo Silver. Painted the second apparatus and the rear lights with red. And I caught myself a panther tank. I painted it in snow camo colors. Dry brushed the leathers with steel color to show a bit of a wear on their paint. With Vallejo dark rubber color, I painted the thread shoes or whatever they are called. Here, where the details really start showing up, I applied black wash here and there to bring up the armor plates, rivets, adjoining parts all over the vehicle.
since this is a fighting vehicle, I wanted to apply some dirt. For this, I used various weathering powders. And finally, I applied Splash Mod Effect on the tracks, wheels, side skirts and so on. Before I was done with the painting, I stencil applied the unit marking with regular white paint. You might be familiar with this from my earlier works. Tried doing the same for its name with stencil, but I failed, due to the um, very small size of the text, so I had to write it myself. Meet Tiny, a made up name for a made up self propelled howitzer. This ended up nicely for a second attempt. I made this in 30 second scale, which made it easier for me, but my end goal will always going to be smaller scales. I will use this in a diorama scene in the future. Let me know in the comments what kind of a diorama scene I should do around this. A snowy battlefield, urban warfare or this being serviced in a maintenance hangar? Let me know about your opinions. And don't forget to like this video if you did, make sure to subscribe for future videos. I'll see you next time.